grown interactive digital media companies. A simulated racing car allows them to test their racing skills. Or try out next generation learning by interacting with physical and digital objects in real time. Also on display the island's rich multicultural heritage. And experience what the country has to offer and take winning pictures as Singapore hosts the Youth Olympic Games. Celebrations will continue with performances from some of Singapore's homegrown music artists like Atu and Tanya Chua. And for the next three days, the first 10,000 visitors to the pavilion will receive special edition commemorative pins and kids entertained with face painting and magic show. Glenda Chong, Channel News Asia, Shanghai. That's it for Singapore tonight, but do stay tuned as That's IT Uploaded is up next. Timothy Goh looks for the best free productivity software online, plus the lowdown on the latest iPhone 4 and the much-hyped iPad. Are they worth having? Find out next. Gain City at Sun Plaza is now open. Samsung will give endless support to Gain City because Samsung believes that Gain City always delivers good service and good price to Singapore consumers. This is difficult for me to make choices because there's a lot of varieties. Like. I read that all of their technicians are certified BCA and also they don't outsource to other companies. We have a wide range of latest products at unmatchable lowest prices for your selection. Hurry! Due to overwhelming response, this sale will be extended to all shows. This month in Style Man magazine, we talk to football superstar turned fashion model Hidetoshi Nakata. Look your best with this season's hottest get-ups and find the right pair of jeans for your body type. The latest watch report straight from Switzerland. Plus, we clue you in on the different types of suits and cuts. We also celebrate the return of classic watches this year. Plus, get a free cologne when you subscribe to Style Man now. August issue, running out fast. Get it now. Singapore, the most livable city in Asia, presents its first designer residences by you, inspired by Stark. Turning urban living into extravagant art. Heaton Holdings unveils the avant-garde I Live at Grange, a 16-storey development set to turn heads. Nestled in the heart of Orchard, Singapore's prime shopping district, it boasts a stunning architectural design by Italy's Mercurio Design Lab and luxurious landscaping and interiors designed by you, inspired by Stark. I Live at Grange promises a living experience like no other. Nowadays, a lot of people are moving towards lifestyle and we are doing something that will meet the needs of people looking to these lifestyles in living. It's a little oasis in the middle of a bustling town, Singapore. The design is really exquisite. A recent survey shows that Singaporeans are proud of their country and have a strong sense of national loyalty, but not so among the younger generation who are found to have a weaker sense of national identity and pride. Is there a cause for concern and what more can be done to strengthen their emotional bonds to the country? Talking Point, Sunday at 10.10pm 10, 10 on Channel News Asia. This week, I want to begin by asking you to keep one question in mind. Do I really need it? I'm talking about word processing systems and presentation slide and spreadsheet making programs that we've all gotten used to. Microsoft recently released its Office 2010, but with a lot of free applications out there, is it really worth your money? We weigh the pros and cons right now. Microsoft Office 2010 is perhaps one of the best things that ever happened to this college student. Daniel So discovered OneNote, a component of Office that helps him get ahead in the classroom. It's designed to contain all of your notes in one place. 
so you know it, it helps you organize it just the way that you want to organize it. Organizing is one thing, but Daniel says it is the time-saving features of OneNote that got him hooked on using Office. There's something that OneNote can do that you can never do with a, a physical notebook, and that is the ability to search through them. And that is how OneNote makes it really powerful for students. Time-saving is exactly what Microsoft wants you to get out of the 2010 version of Office. And with productivity being the buzzword for a recovering economy, Microsoft thinks everything you need to be productive can be found in its products. The three which I like the most, first is the email management inside Outlook. What we've done from Outlook in Outlook 2010 is essentially we've moved away from individual email management to managing conversations. You know, you may have seen it in your, your company or your enterprise. Somebody sends an email to a large mailing group and then people start replying off. So one of the features we have built is called the Ignore Conversation Group. Once you ignore that particular conversation, people can reply off. It never even hits your inbox. Office 2010 also took the popularity of Facebook, LinkedIn, and other social networking sites into consideration. After all, if you can't beat them, then join them. The differences between your work life and your personal life is blurring over time. So increasingly, the new generation is quite comfortable working as well as doing Facebook at the same time. But we are bringing all that social experience inside Outlook so that at one place you could do your emails at the same time, go through your Facebook and other social networks. Another new highlight worth mentioning is PowerPoint's video editing capabilities. Now you can trim and do basic editing just before attaching that video to your presentation, saving you a few more steps and a lot less work. And back in school, Office 2010 can also make you look like the smartest kid in class. Let's say you're in a maths lesson and then the professor goes like, oh, you know, writes a formula, and then she's trying to think of the answer, but because you were typing with her, and the moment you hit a space bar, the answer comes out, and you can go like, I know the answer, and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a, some cheats. <laughs> Those of you still using its predecessor, the Office 2007, are probably still happy about what you have, so why upgrade? The 2010 version only has some slight improvements that many of us can still live without. And then there are the freebies, applications that perform similar functions as what the office can do. We tested some of them for you, and here's the lowdown. It is no secret Microsoft has dominated the productivity suite market, but if you are a little more adventurous, you will find a little free things in life that can make it a little sweeter. The most famous Office alternative would be OpenOffice by Oracle. It offers tools for word processing, spreadsheets, presentations, graphics, databases, and a whole lot more. The layout and offering is very similar to the de facto standard that Microsoft Office offers. If you are used to working on Office's available templates, then you will miss this in OpenOffice. Customer support is also virtually non-existent. One big drawback from using anything but Microsoft Office is the compatibility issue. Documents created by other productivity suite will most likely not be able to open using Microsoft Office. But even if it can be opened, the result may be less than favorable. But that said, did we tell you that OpenOffice is free? Uh-huh. We are still going to say this to you again. It is free. And it doesn't cost a single cent to try it. And if you don't like it, you can always delete it and pay for Microsoft Office. If you have more time to spare and less cash to spare, well, here are more freebies you can try. So it is really up to you. Buy or download what you really need and save yourself money for something else. Or you can get what you're used to using and experience the improvements that come along with it. And now it's time to have a look at what's buzzing in the world of technology. The iPhone 4 hit the Asian market last week and already it is fast becoming a bestseller thanks to fans who are hooked on anything Apple. But why are they clamoring for one, even when the device has a known flaw? Is it the hype or is the iPhone really the best product from Apple to date? We'll let you decide. The new look is a head turner with the front and back made with chemically strengthened glass. The new Retina display also makes the screen the sharpest in the market. The new iPhone has a 5 megapixel camera with an LED flash. It is also capable of shooting HD videos 
that you can then edit on the spot with the iMovie app and then share instantly on YouTube or Facebook. Though Apple is not the first to provide video calling functions, the iPhone 4 makes it simple with FaceTime, as long as you have Wi-Fi. But would you buy the iPhone when you know there's been no real solution to its death grip problem? I tried in vain to kill the signal, but after countless attempts with three Singapore service providers, the iPhone signal remained strong. So I wonder, was the death grip problem really overhyped, just like everything that has to do with the iPhone? Perhaps. But then again, does it really matter when most iPhone users use their devices for everything else other than making phone calls? And really, who would hold the phone this way anyway? And what about the iPad? Did it live up to all the hype? In Singapore, the gadget was sold out within a day. The iPad is a great device to have when you are on the go and need company. The apps we downloaded are all fun and useful to have. The iPad is instant entertainment, instantly on, and gets you online in no time. Wi-Fi only or the 3G? I suggest getting the 3G because Wi-Fi may not be readily available everywhere, which will render your iPad useless. The iPad was never meant to replace your notebook, so don't even think about doing any kind of hardcore work on it. However, this unit is great for showing off documents, charts, and presentation slides you've already done. And again, being instantly on, you can show off without having to wait. What I don't like is the inconvenience of putting in personal videos. To put in your personal movies, you would have to go through the entire iTunes route and add the file manually into a library. Too much work, if you ask me. Upload your thoughts on Facebook or Twitter, if you have time. I'm Timothy Go. That's it. This National Day, join Channel News Asia as we mark Singapore's 45th birthday with a series of special programs. On the eve of National Day, journey back to the first decade of Singapore's independence. We are sovereign, independent, and as the phrase goes, forever and ever. Watch how the country's first leaders made a difference in 10 men, 10 years, shaping a nation. On National Day, discover the quirks of this tiny melting pot on Culture Shock Singapore. Then view Singapore's Margaret Drive and the Pearl Bank Apartments in a whole new light in the award-winning Sin City Singapore. A tragedy that shocked the nation, but also rallied together ordinary Singaporeans. Find out how the cable car accident changed the country in Spirit of Singapore. And what truly makes Singapore Singaporean? Discover a group of people who undertake projects that root them to this country on Singapore Heartbeat. Celebrate Singapore's 45th National Day on Channel News Asia.